Welcome to this edition of Psychic Tips, Tricks, and How-Tos, where it's all about helping you unlock your psychic potential. Let's talk about clairvoyance, what it is, and my top tips to develop and strengthen your clairvoyant abilities. My name is Dar Payment, and I'm a professional psychic medium and channel who is passionate about sharing with you how to accelerate your psychic abilities. When it comes to clairvoyance, there is so much folklore attached to it. Lots of Hollywood movies, oh, my third eye, or some old lady psychic with her fortune-telling ball, something bad's going to happen. You know, I have to laugh at that because there is so much junk attached to this psychic center. And really, it is one of the most common and most easy to develop of all your psychic abilities. And the reason for that is just by our culture in itself, we are trained to be visual people. We're trained to think visually. We're trained to take in media visually. For purposes of today's discussion, I want to let you know this is easy to learn because we've all been prompted to use our visual senses. So what exactly is clairvoyance? Clairvoyance simply means clear seeing or the ability to see clearly beyond the normal range of visual perception. That's it. (laughs) No mystery to it. You know, and clairvoyance, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more in our discussion today, clairvoyance really has uh, its origins, which which is called the third eye or the pineal gland. So we'll talk more about the pineal gland and its function and how you could actually learn to to decalcify that pineal gland and to use it to your advantage a little bit later on in our discussion. But first, I want to share with you some of my own top tips that will help make strengthening your clairvoyant ability easier and perhaps easier than you ever thought was possible. So let's dig in, okay? My first tip here really is to have confidence in yourself and your ability to tap into your psychic senses. And I'm not just talking about tapping into the third eye. (laughs) I'm talking about tapping into all your psychic senses, whether it's clairaudience, which means clear hearing, clairsentience, which means clear feeling, claircognizance, which just means clear knowing. You need to trust and have confidence in what is coming through. How do you do that? There's a lot of ways you can do that. But the reason you want to have confidence and learn to trust what's coming through is because if you don't trust, if you doubt, that's what you're signaling to the universe about you, around you. That's what you're signaling to infinite love. You're saying, I don't trust what's coming through. And guess what? What you put out there energetically is what is going to return. So if you don't trust what's coming through, you're going to get a lot of gobbledygook that's coming through for you. Now, you have the ability with practice to get really good and comfortable and confident with your clear seeing. But the first thing you need to take a look at is your ability to do just that. It's already very easy for you if you're very clairvoyant to visualize. If you look at an object and you simply close your eyes and mentally see that object, then you're very proficient already at receiving visual images. But once again, it takes practice. Now, another thing people think is, I am not a visual person, therefore I cannot (laughs) develop my clairvoyant abilities. Really, that's a bunch of baloney. That's just not true. The truth of the matter is you can visualize. If you can recall a memory, you can visualize. So it's just not listening to that whiny, naggy voice that says you can't, that you're not good enough, and just practice. Now here's an amazing, crazy story for you. When I was about eight years old, now I studied in the psychic arts when I was very young, but when I was about eight years old, my teacher, 
Mrs. Harriet had us sitting there. She got us in a really relaxed state. And she said to us, all right, what I want you to do is focus on one of your parents, which I did. And in my mind's eye, I saw an ambulance with its lights on. And I knew it had something to do with my father. And I felt an immense uh, sort of discomfort around my cheeks and my nose area. And it was so disturbing for me, I immediately opened my eyes and I looked at Mrs. Harriet. At that point in time, she put her finger to her lips like, shh, quiet, so I don't disturb everyone else. So I just sat there kind of shaken. And I explained to her when the meditation was over what I saw. (laughs) The crazy thing is, when I got home that night, my father had a bandage over his nose. What had happened was he was, my my father was in the military. He was at the base. Um, He was getting out of his car and there was some enlisted men right next to him getting out of their vehicles. And somehow there was an altercation and the guy punched my dad in the nose. Now, little kid, when I heard that, I was hoping, oh man, daddy, hope you got some in there too. (laughs) But isn't it crazy? Just from a simple point of relaxing your mind, relaxing your body, you can quite literally tune in. And that's what I teach my my students to do in psychic development classes is to learn to get quiet. There's a certain uh, type of, of meditation you can do that can immediately help you learn to deepen your clairvoyant abilities and your others. But the bottom line is have confidence in yourself and your ability to tune in and tap into these psychic senses because they're already a natural part of you. My second top tip is to learn to pay attention to your visual impressions as they show up for you. The thing is, when it comes to visual imagery, some people have psychic information show up in different ways. Some people might have psychic information show up symbolically. Some people might have, you know, flashes of visions pass through their minds. Some people might see an object. And some people might even see certain images from movies that they've seen pop up. Now, when it comes to symbolic references, let me give you an example of what happened to me. So at this point in time, I was living in Southern California, and I had... It was early. It was in the um, it was in the early nineties. All right, don't judge here. I had to get a money order, right? Where was PayPal then? <laughs> but I had to get a, a money order and for a particular um, amount of money, and I had to get it out that day. So I went to the bank early in the morning, came home, put the put the check in a envelope, put it outside into the mailbox. Now, when I put it outside into the mailbox and I put the little flag up, there were some kids out there playing. My neighbors and some other neighbors are just out there playing, riding around on their bikes and everything. And about 20 minutes later, I really had this this feeling, this urge that I needed to go outside and check to make sure that that cashier's check was okay. I opened up the mailbox and the check was gone. And I knew at this point that the mail person had not yet come, but the check was gone. Immediately when I tuned in, I saw the wooden pole that the mailbox was on broken in half, and I saw a bicycle leaning against it. So symbolically, that meant the mailbox was broken in two. Get it? Broken in T-W-O to broken into. So I knew, and they saw the bicycle, so I knew the kids did it. So immediately, I went to the bank, canceled that cashier's check, got another one, and took it to the post office and mailed it. But that's an example of symbolic. You know, if you see a, a particular vision of a particular part of a movie, then that can also be a symbolic interpretation of what you're receiving. If you see, say, um, a movie where you watched and somebody's father had died and they're all sad, perhaps you're picking up on an impression of somebody who has passed. You know, maybe somebody's father has passed. Or you might see flashes of images going past your mind. Uh, about, um, I would say about um, six or seven years ago, I was driving home in my car and I had a flash of my husband eating Chinese food. And I thought, and it just flashed. It was just a flash. I thought, that's really strange. Well, 
I came home, and guess what? He brought home Chinese food for dinner, and they had given him a sample of an egg roll while he was waiting. <laughs> right? And here's the thing. When I'm sharing with you to pay attention to your visual impressions as they show up, they may show up simply driving your car. They might show up while you're in the shower. You know, many times for me, I'm doing another activity and these images will just spontaneously show up, but I've learned to tune into them. Now, here's the thing. If you're a newbie and when you're learning to, to develop your psychic senses, just trust what's coming through at that time and place. Don't second guess it. Don't try to rationalize it away. Just jot it down. It'll, it'll go a long way in your development. Another thing you can do is just be extremely excited and grateful that you are receiving impressions right now. You might not understand them, but they're flowing, right? So don't worry about the interpretation. Just get into that habit of paying attention to what's coming through. Now, my third top tip is to learn to work with your third eye chakra. You know, your third eye chakra is connected to what's commonly known as the seat of the soul. And there is scientific evidence that the third eye is attached to what's called the pineal gland. Now, here's the thing. All of the chakras in your body, the seven major chakras, are connected to a major gland in the body. The chakras have been proven medically, scientifically to exist. So for the pineal gland, the third eye, what we want to do is to learn to utilize that to your best benefit. Now, one of the things you can do that is what's called third eye tapping. Third eye tapping is really interesting. I've had great experience with it, and so has my students. But when it comes to pineal gland tapping, what you simply do is lightly tap right between your eyes. Just tap. You want to tap hard enough to where you can feel, not to where you knock yourself out, (laughs) but you want to tap hard enough to where you can feel it vibrating. Just on the outside, right between your eyes, it'll tingle. And if you do this right before you meditate, and I like to do this before I do a reading for people. I just tap it three or four times. You'll notice this pleasant tingling sensation. The other thing you can do is what I call om humming. You've heard the monks, all the Tibetan monks, that beautiful om, and it, it kind of vibrates. Om. You can do the same thing and hum it. And when you hum, don't close your mouth all the way. You'll notice when your your teeth kind of vibrate, if you put your tongue up right behind the top of where your teeth meet on your gums and you do this humming, and if you focus on that humming, you'll notice that you'll feel it vibrating between your eyes. And if you do that, sustain that for about four to for six minutes max, you'll notice this real amazing tingling sensation. And what you're essentially doing is to help clear that pineal gland. So when you're beginning to awaken and open the third eye, some people might get a little bit of a headache, but that's okay. That's the natural part of this psychic awakening. Some people will get headaches. Some people will feel real tired or some people might feel dizzy. That's just normal, right? Just go with it. Just make sure you have some water near and perhaps a tiny piece of chocolate or something, and that will keep you grounded and help keep those symptoms at bay. Now, my fourth top tip for you is to develop your psychic senses with practice. You've got to practice over and over till you get it right. Just like learning to ride a bike. You didn't learn to ride a bike by just getting on it and pedaling. You did it over and over again. Sometimes you fell down, but you focused, you committed yourself to practice until you got it. It's really fun to be able to practice with another person. It keeps you motivated. So if you can find somebody to practice along with you, go for it. Um, Another thing is to read fiction books. I'm not even kidding here. This is something Mrs. Harriet taught me when I was a kid. She said the reason you want to do that because it develops concentration And it also allows your brain to pick up on more 
visual elements. So reading fiction books is an amazing way to quickly and easily develop not only your concentration, but also the visual repertory, the the images that you're calling up in your mind. One thing that you can also do, and this is something Mrs. Harriet had us do when we were a kid, and this is super easy. She would sit an object in front of us and have us close our eyes and mentally recall that image. And just by doing that, you learn to hold the, the, the visual image for longer periods of time. And when you're clairvoyant, the longer you can hold that image, the longer you're going to be able to interpret what's coming through. So instead of having a fleeting image, it's very clear and it's very concrete. Now, the final tip is to keep a journal of your psychic practice. Doing this develops confidence in a huge, huge way. Now, finally, I want to remind you that Your intuitive abilities, your psychic abilities are a natural part of who you are and they're waiting for you to discover them. And when you discover them by practice, you learn to empower yourself with these incredible abilities to not only help yourself, but to help others. And it's amazing the things you can do when you learn to tune in. So get ready to dive in and also have fun. If you enjoyed this vlogcast, I invite you to like and subscribe, and I'll make sure to give you more tools, tips, and tricks, and how-tos to help you live the psychic life. This is Dar Payment wishing you blessings, love, and light.